Uh, hello, I'm Anthony Woodhouse. I'm chairman of Hall and Woodhouse. Um, you're here today to talk about North South Council local plan mm -hmm. um, and how important planning is to you and to your business. So first, before we talk about that, just talk a little bit about the history of this business because it's got an amazing Dorset history, hasn't it? How, how long have I got? Um, <laughs> Uh, we've just had on Tuesday our 244th birthday, actually. So we've been been around a while. We're a seventh, eighth generation uh, family business. Uh, we have uh, pubs all across southern England, um, and we have a, obviously a brewery in Blandford, which is our third brewery. We build a new brewery roughly every 110, 120 years, in line with our 500-year plan. Uh, and we have the Badger uh, beer brand and Rio as well, a, a soft drink, soft drink brand. Um, what does planning mean to Hall and Woodhouse? What do you think planning means? Dorset, as I say, has been our home for, you know, nine on 250 years. So, uh, and for both on, on a family basis and family business way. So for us, Dorset is really important to us, both commercially um, and uh, and sort of emotionally as well. So the, the, the future um, of Dorset and its future prosperity is very close to our hearts and our heads. I think um, I'm incredibly excited about the opportunities for Dorset. I think people are waking up to the fact that Dorset is a great place to work, um, and, you know, a great place to, to do business. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to retire to. It's a great place to come on holiday, so um, I, I think the opportunities are, are, are very, very great. But I think we've got to make sure that that process of, of growth and, and moving forward is managed in a balanced way, because otherwise, and, and the challenges that, that lie behind that is that we've got to make sure that we've got the right housing at the right price in the right places uh, for, for, for our needs. We don't want Dorset to hollow out as a sort of second home county. Uh, we don't want to price out of the market um, some sections um, of our community and, and things like that. Um, and similarly, as we sort of encourage and, and get that growth and, and further prosperity, we don't want to sort of kill, kill the golden goose of the fabulous countryside and, and the fabulous atmosphere and, um, that Dorset is. So to me, planning in the widest sense, and I just don't mean planning for a particular house, but actually planning um, the future of Dorset and how we manage that growth, I think is absolutely fundamental because if we don't, it will happen to us. Um, and then, which would be a, a crying shame, and we might not suffer the consequences, but our grandchildren or great-grandchildren, and you know, we think generationally, so we're, we're, we're really concerned and, and excited, but concerned that we make sure we get it right for the next 50, 100, 200 years. So we were talking earlier on about um, you being involved with um, housing developments and, and everything else. Why is that important to you as a business? Um, pubs have changed dramatically, um, particularly over the last 20 to 30 years. Um, and pubs of the past aren't necessarily pubs of the future, but pubs still sit absolutely centrally at the core of communities. And therefore, um, to, to, to my mind, we have to adapt our bub, um, pubs to make sure that they're providing what guests want. Uh, Similarly, any community that is that is built, or any house, you know, sort of town extensions or whatever, you've got to have the right facilities in there because otherwise you're just creating a dormitory town. And one, who wants to live there? And two, you suddenly put pressure on other facilities, and, and it, it just doesn't fit together. So we spend a lot of time working with developers all across southern England um, who are keen to sort of, and we call it placemaking, and we build a number of. Uh, of pubs as part of new developments um, that become the core of the community. And I, uh, I was at uh, one that we've just built up in just to the west of Swindon in a new town called Witchelstow there. And we've made a five, six million pound investment there. And you go into the marketing suite for the houses and it says, why come and w um, live at Witchelstow? Because you've got a Waitrose and a Hall and Wood house on your doorstep. And that's what placemaking is all about. Um, it's not just creating these, these, these dormitory areas, uh, 
being, you know, placing a burden on, you know, local infrastructure, etc. It's about creating these wonderful places to live. And we obviously think having a pub is really important. And pubs are so different. They're all day trading. I mean, this that pub in Swindon sells more coffees than it does ale. You know, it serves 150, 200 coffees before lunchtime every day. So it's the places where people meet. It's um, maybe come for breakfast on the way to work. It could be after dropping the kids off at school. It could be working on your laptop. You know, in terms of home working. It could be coming out for lunch with friends, afternoon tea, coming for a drink after work to to wind down, commiserate, or celebrate, or having dinner. So all these sort of things, and the, the pub is the perfect place for that. So one part of planning that people um, love or hate, perhaps is the infrastructure, is the roads. Um, being in Blanford, in this place, um, obviously you, you, you're here to stay, it's part of that, but is there something that planning can help with, do you think, or is that the, just the structure of being in rural Dorset? A, a huge difference. If you think we um, sell you know, 15 to 20 million bottles of beer that are all um, brewed and bottled here, those have to go out on big trunkers all over the UK and indeed all over the world. Um, sitting in the you know, sort of rural North Dorset with the, with the roads as they are, that is a challenge. Having said that, uh, if we had a motorway straight through the middle of Dorset, now, what does that do to Dorset? You know, you, you, you've got to balance that off. And as far as we're concerned, you know, the, 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 the attraction of, of being where we are, for, not for his, just for historical reasons and emotional reasons, but also, um, you know, our people, who, you've got a broad range of people who, who, who work here, um, team, and it's a fabulous place for them to, and that's a real draw, frankly, if the, a350 was a motorway it would be a bit different so I always I, I do think that's different I difficult I think we do need to upgrade some of the key roads you know that um, east west isn't too bad but you know really it should be dual carriageway a, a bit more um, north to south is impossible which you know anyone try to get through Melbury Abbas or or the bottom Blanford Shasby Road or whatever you know it, it's really hard so North to south is, 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 a, is, a, is an issue, is clearly an issue. How important is it for you to have your workforce living close by or living within, within Dorset perhaps? Um, um, I think people are far more mobile and, and obviously with, with, as I say, with pubs all across um, southern England, people don't have to live in, in Dorset um, and actually we would actively encourage some people not to live in, in Dorset. We had people travelling um, pre-pandemic, I think there was a, a million business miles. Now, that, that ain't right. Um, and one of the ways that you can um, reduce that is making sure that there are, there are homes near to where people are working. So that, that's one of the ways of doing it. And clearly now technology and that leap forward in terms of virtual meetings and things will help us cut that down. Um, it's bad for the environment, it's bad for our team, you know, all those sort of things. So, you know, that every, there's, we're not going to crack all of it overnight and I would not, not want to visit every single one of the pubs we've got, you know, at, at least once a year. But, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to work out how we cut that down and every, there's going to be a whole series of little bits and one of the thing is having the right housing in the right places. It's just sort of, it's quite important to have those from a, from a business point of view of actually how you feel about that. Yes. Because otherwise, you know, it does impact on staff, doesn't it, and employees, if they have to travel. Well, it, it does, and it, particularly during the summertime, when obviously we're, we're very busy travelling, if people are living down in Poole and Bournemouth, for instance, you know, travelling up here is pretty tough, you know, and, it's, and it, that's hard work. Bournemouth's not particularly blessed with public transport, is it? Um, it's got some bus routes and bits and pieces, but mm. obviously you've not got a train network or anything else near. Um, how, as a business, does that impact? If does I had a, a magic wand and want to change one thing in relation to sort of transport is cycleways. I think we would have a huge amount of people who would cycle to work. And, and, and with the best will in the world, you know, the A3, 
350 or um, 354 is is um, not one that you would do that on. Uh, I, I mean, I would cycle to work from Dorchester, but I, I just simply wouldn't dare. Now, you know, the roads are just too narrow and they're just too busy to do that. So I think that would be more than um, potentially for um, public transport and, and things like that. Now, that just may be the, the nature of our, our team. And obviously, a lot of, lot of team live in Blandford. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people who, who would who would love to, to cycle to work. We're, we're lucky because we've got the trailway, uh, which works, which is brilliant. Um, okay, that's at the, at the cost of the train, but you know, it's uh, um, it, that is that, that is great, and and people do use that, and it just which makes me think that actually cycleways and things would make a big difference. From a from a business growth point of view, mm -hmm. um, for the Dorset Council local plan. Um, how do you think it will help encourage new investment, expansion of businesses, um, and trying to get employment land in in the right places or the sustainable places, the best places? Have you got any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, I have. I mean, I, I think the the enterprise zone is great, and the plans for that, and I, and I can really see that working, um, which is which is exciting. And I know there's some been some. Um, What's it called? The Battle Lab is coming, and things which is which is which is fabulous. <coughs> um, for me, I think the biggest play probably is Weymouth. I think Weymouth is a absolute sleeping giant. I think it's a fabulous town. I think it's got all the infrastructure, and and just with a a bit of sort of careful sort of planning and 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 organization and, uh, and there's some really good people working on it now i know there are which is which is great i'm just so excited for weymouth i just think it's a it's a wonderful town and it could be one of the real gems of the whole south coast I'd, i'm absolutely convinced of it so that would be the big one for me the difficulty is it's it's clearly had a tough time and the only way out of that is is um, more in, more employment in, in Weymouth and gently growing it out. What we don't want to do is say, oh well, you know, we, we just don't want ten percent of the population. That's that, 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 no, that's not what we want. Um, I know. I just think Weymouth's a huge opportunity, huge opportunity, and we've got to do it in the way that brings everyone along, not just turn it into a sort of a, an expensive seaside town that you know only the the rich can go to. For me, the 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 proposed solution for the, the housing needs makes sense. I, I just think it makes more sense than sort of um, overburdening villages and, and which don't have the facilities to cope with it and, uh, and everything like that. Um, and we've got such a concentration. We're so lucky that we have such lovely areas. In the end of the day, you know, that means the areas that haven't got that designation or whatever, that's the only place that the development can go. Um, and if that's by where, where the jobs are and all the rest of it, then they, but it's always controversial. You know, inevitably it really is. And that's why it's got to be based in fundamental logic and, and, and right so that, you know, people can accept it, even if emotionally it's, uh, it's hard.